the United, United Nations and the norm of R2P. You probably haven't heard of R2P, but Rupmati Kandakar has heard about it. As a matter of fact, she wrote a book about it. And that book um, is in the um, it's in the United Nations Library and it's in the Parliament Library in India. So it's gaining some traction. We're going to show you the book cover right now. Um, there it is, uh, The Norm of R2P by Dr. Rupmati Kandakar. And uh, let, me, let me welcome you to the show, Rupmati. Hi, thank you for joining us. Aloha, Jay. And it's uh, just amazing, simply amazing interacting with you on every occasion that I get. So it's precious to me. And thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, thank you, Rupmati. Um, it's, it's great to talk to you. It's great to talk to somebody in your situation, your position. You, you keep on writing these books. You, you can't stop. You must continue to write these books, okay? Um, so I want to know about this book. This book is kind of you know, close to our hearts in the sense that it, um, the R2P stands for protecting countries from genocide and, uh, you know, and uh, atrocities and outrage and what have you. Um, so can you tell us what R2P is and can you tell us, you know, what the book does? Yeah. So this book got me excited like a kid because it went into the Indian, it was, got selected into the Indian parliament. And uh, so just let me give you a gist of uh, what the book is about. It's about the responsibility to protect of the United Nations. Now, this is a principle that authorizes the United Nations to protect civilians on in the, in the, realm of only four areas. It's very categorically stated that it's going to be ethnic cleansing, war crime, uh, crimes against humanity, and uh, what is that? Uh, genocide. So these four uh, areas only. And uh, Jay, this principle rests on three equivalent, uh, meaning these, uh, this principle gives equal importance to three tenets. That is that the state first primarily is responsible for protecting its citizens. Second, the international community assists every state to protect its civilians in these areas. And third pillar is that if the state does not protect its uh, um, civilians and manifestly uh, harms its citizens, the international community will come together through the United Nations to protect the civilians of that state. Now see, Jay, it's a very complicated principle because you override sovereignty. <laughs> the basic rule of sovereignty is you respect a nation's borders. So in this principle, the international community as a whole is going to trespass into the borders of a country and protect civilians on the basis of humanity against four crimes. Now, Jay, this was a principle which was founded in 2005. And it uh, came into force uh, in Libya. So uh, when you have uh, the international community authorizing military actions, now this principle was supposed to be a last resort uh, uh, to use military principle. It means you, can, you have to go diplomatically, you have to go and have a lot of uh, interactions and uh, military use is the last resort. But we have in Libya that military uh, was used but only in Libya. And then after that, Syria, when you have the same things. Now, most recently, when we are seeing in Ukraine, uh, and we just have had the General Assembly. So why aren't we having this principle used again? So there's a big question mark that comes into the task of the UN. Why aren't they doing this concrete action when it is needed the most today? But now we connect back to the, uh, to the whole issue of the reform of the United Nations, that because the veto power rests with Russia also and China also, they will not authorize this military action. So the United Nations falls short to implement military action in Ukraine because Russia is a permanent member. So this is like a catch-22 situation where we cannot, we are stuck. We are stuck and the United Nations cannot do anything effectively. So uh, you see, Jay, genocide is on, war crimes are on, ethnic cleansing on, on, is on, and war against humanity is on. Crimes against humanity is on. So uh, what do we do now? 
what is the resort that we uh, adhere to? If we have NATO action, there will be retaliatory Warsaw action. So uh, we don't want that clash to happen. And we have, uh, um, can we call it a tyrant? Tyrant state uh, mm -hmm. uh, is threatening a nuclear war uh, directly, uh, uh, saying that I will go for a third world war if third nuclear uh, war if I am threatened. So if he goes down, he takes everybody down with him. So <laughs> we are in such a bad situation right now. And uh, see. America is across the Pacific, uh, Atlantic. So we have to understand that this is happening in Europe. And Germany uh, coming in directly, you have the oil and gas situation going on. So uh, see, when Ukraine was allowed to export wheat and keep the bread baskets of the world uh, um, fulfilled, uh, it was kind of a calm that came in and everybody thought that now we are having our bread and uh, Ukraine is getting their money, so everything will be fine. But this can't go on forever. You can't keep them in that situation. For, you know, uh, you need to rescue them. Ukraine needs to be rescued and it needs to be rescued fast. So when Germany promises air defense and backs off and, uh, you know, you still wait, you're still depending on Russia for oil and gas. It's such a complicated situation, Jay. Uh, you are uh, you are uh, threatening military action against Russia by Ukraine, but you're expecting oil and gas from Russia. So if he threatens to stop the supply, uh, uh, Russia is not going to be able to go for it, isn't it? Mm. So uh, it's a well, difficult situation. It's, it's a very difficult, difficult and uh, well, what it, I mean, of course, the principle is exactly yes. correct. Exactly yes. correct. 2005 is almost 20 years ago. Um, so um, unfortunately, it, you know, aside from Libya, it hasn't been implemented. Uh, and, and that's really tragic. And it, it reveals the, uh, the, the systemic flaw, the profound flaw uh, in the United Nations, in the charter from day one. You know, it's, it's, it's like a great idea, um, but uh, impossible you know, to implement. It's sort of like the American Constitution, great idea, but, um, you know, it had slavery baked in, so that wasn't so good, and, and it leaves us a legacy of trouble. Um, and the same thing here, we have a legacy of trouble with the United Nations. So I guess uh, the question is, uh, you, you mentioned reform. How, how, at least theoretically, you know, procedurally, how could the United Nations be reformed so it could implement this very important principle? See, theoretically, Jay, uh, the world order has changed since 1945 and changed so that drastically. So you have the power of the United Nations resting in five people with one veto being able to thwart uh, four people's willpower. So if you have uh, uh, expansion of the uh, um, veto power, Expansion of the veto power means more people have the veto power and a majority wins rather than one veto being allowed to uh, stop the decision. You can have three versus two. You, you can have US, Germany and France being able to uh, continue uh, ahead, you know. So uh, these things are so important if you want uh, action in the world today. Otherwise, we are just going to be spectators. That's, that's a thing that we, we are watching from the past seven and a half months. We are watching Ukraine being bombed. Can anybody do anything about it? You have no. uh, had so many meetings, so many intergovernmental meetings, so many uh, international organizations meeting every day. You have bilaterals, multilaterals. Who is effectively uh, helping people? Business, no. trade, ruble is... Uh, uh, ruble, uh, Trading is going on, you know, the replacement of the dollar with the ruble is on. You can't, recession, in the U.S. has risen to a different level. So all these things have to be taken into account that economically it's going to hurt across the oceans. It's not going to have a, a conservative effect. It's going to come um, as a multiplier effect. And uh, strategically, how much ever you think and how much ever you want to uh, control your um, 
action, retaliatory action, it has to be effective action, Jay. Unless this is stopped, it's going to have repercussions on the economy, which is going to affect millions and millions of people all over the world. Recession is not an easy thing. Uh, maybe it will be easy for the middle class to absorb, but the lower classes will be pushed into uh, homelessness uh, uh, without food. So uh, this can this has to be stopped somewhere. So, so if I go to the United Nations General Assembly, in which is the larger group, um, and and you see them, you talk to them, you know, you know, you know what they're like. Um, my guess, my guess is that if you pose the resolution or a motion um, to change the Security Council, to add members, to make the veto a voted veto instead of a unilateral veto, um, you, you would not be able to get a majority or necessary vote to make that change. Am I right? That resolution will be vetoed. <laughs> so... It's, it's as simple as that. Any resolution to bring in more power at the Security Council is vetoed. And it has been done several times. So they don't, want, they don't want to share power. Who will want to share power? The king will never want to share his throne. So it's, it's kind of like uh, that way. You know, uh, it comes to very selfish needs at the United Nations. And strategically, uh, they get countries who please them. For using the veto so power. So you could right? not you could not change this at the general assembly. No, no. Uh, there was this is not permitted by the charter. Yes, and uh, the charter is protected by the veto. So it's like a circle which we cannot break, and it's a vicious cycle which we cannot break, and uh, we are stuck in it. I mean, reform uh, studies and reform uh, demands. We have the Brazil Club, the Coffee Club, the uh, African Club all asking for one seat. The African continent is asking for a single seat in the Security Council. Now that's permissible, but they're not being given. Hmm. So uh, where, where, do you, where do you take us on that? Because it sounds like you can't get there from here. That is, you cannot reform the Security Council, therefore you cannot reform the veto. Therefore, Russia, uh, and for that matter, Russia and China, and if India gets behind it, Russia, China, I don't know, is India on the Security Council? No. Okay. No. Russia, Russia and China, either one of them could stop any kind of R2P action anytime. And yes. R2P is a core point for the United Nations. I think Correct. you make that clear. So we're stuck here. We're, yes. we're, we're locked. And, and the United Nations is unable to fulfill what I would consider its most important principle. Um, yes. So where, where do you take us on that? Do we have to we, create we, another United Nations? <laughs> we have 10 members on the Security Council and India is part of the rotating members. Uh, five membership is rotated amongst the 200 other members, uh, 195 other members on a two-year basis. But these five members are uh, formality sake. They don't have veto powers. Only the permanent five, the big five, they have the permanent power, uh, the veto power. So these five who come, they will come, they will give speeches and they will say reform, 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 and they will, the two-year-old term gets over and they go out. Now, what happens, Jay? So many countries who have strategic interests, they please the veto holding powers to act on their behalf. So you have Pakistan asking uh, uh, US to intervene when we have a Kashmir resolution, or India asking uh, Russia to help them when we have something against us, or Japan, uh, you know, you have uh, the Southeast Asian countries asking China to help them if a resolution goes against them. And you have the African countries with China helps and then takes the land. And, you know, it's, it's a, a, a very intertwined uh, economic, political, uh, web which this uh, these countries uh, are indulging in so it's difficult to break them and to for them to give up veto power all five of them will have to say yes we allow other people to have this veto power but that will never happen never is a big word um and <laughs> so uh, i mean you 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 I, I assume that you are directing this book at what is going on with with russia and ukraine it's the yes. most um, 
it's the most uh, obnoxious thing that's happened uh, in world history in a while. And um, um, wh where can you take that? You, you examine the problems uh, in the United Nations, in the Security Council, and, and we conclude with never. So what, offer me some optimism, uh, Rukmati. Offer <laughs> me a solution. What, what is the solution? Do we, you know, are we stuck forever? <laughs> JC, the responsibility to protect, spoke about the four most heinous crimes, crime against humanity, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, all, all this is happening. Walk, everything is happening in front of our eyes. You are seeing uh, tremendous war crimes and you have a, a, a world leader directly threatening the whole world. If you come into this, I'll go with World War Three. So, and uh, you don't have the other side uh, uh, relenting. They also are very sternly saying, yes, they, they went and blew up the Crimea Bridge. <laughs> so, he, it's one of his favorite bridges. So, it's like poking him when he's most angry. <laughs> they I should mean, blow it up again. That's my opinion. <laughs> they blow it up every day. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the, the thing is, you know, what, 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 what's your message? You know, you examine these things. We find out that we're in a, you know, a, a situation which is not likely to change. So you have the war crimes and the genocide on the one hand. You have the outrageous, uh, um, you know, violation of any kind of norm there. And the United Nations is essentially powerless. Um, okay, so we know that. Um, but are you are you criticizing them? Are you saying, wait a minute, boys, you've got to think of something. You can't just stand by while this happens. We do have a principle here. I mean, are you saying you you guys have got to find a way? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, for sure. For sure, Jay. See, power has made them, uh, You, if you know this, uh, Frederick Nish's uh, three stage of the uh, camel, the uh, lion, and the child, um, after getting that power, when you become crazy and uh, power, you become like a child. They're taking this to such a kiddish level, they're not understanding the uh, the consequences that humanity is going to face. And that is in terms of life itself. When you see mass graves, it is not commendable to uh, speak about uh, principles. Then you want action. And you say that, uh, please stop this uh, on any count. You know, just don't make speeches, take action. The And all the countries together coming and telling Russia, stop. No, it's not happening. See, there is a brilliant trade going on everywhere. Germany, on one hand, promises uh, air defense uh, facilities to Ukraine. On the other hand, buys uh, Russian uh, gas. So you have uh, something like a balance that they are doing. You can't balance it out. You can't balance uh, heinous crimes out. You have to change your dependence and then uh, uh, unilaterally uh, oppose Putin's uh, aggression on Ukraine. You can't have a two-pronged strategy on this. Uh, mm -hmm. so everybody has to come together to support Biden. If Biden has to be a strong leader. He is not assertive, Jay. He has to come out a very, uh, what is that? Um, he has to have heaviness in his character when he comes on the international stage. It can't be those fleeting uh, sentences which he uh, gives, you know. He has to strongly say, let's unite and this will not go on uh, further you know he, if you united nations is the hegemon of the world order you can't deny that you have to act like you're the hegemon of the world order the keeper of the world order so uh, united nations bring it to another just an intergovernmental organization and take charge as the hegemon of the world order and keep it in order that is the role that the united nations has the united states has to play in this it can't so, be. Do you think that uh, Biden, if he were a stronger yes. leader, would, would be able yes. to change what's happening at the United Nations? For sure, for sure. Because see, the sanctions which he was giving, they were half hearted sanctions. See, for bread, for wheat to be exported out of Ukraine, how many uh, meetings took place? How many facilities were made just that you, wheat gets. Uh, supplied through a green corridor of the United Nations to countries. So uh, that is just like just picking out wheat, wheat and letting them die. You can't do that. 
you now uh, russia will sell wheat through kazakhstan through the central asian provinces but they will keep their trade going when they are selling in ruble there has to be such a strong action that you cannot trade in ruble because trading in ruble is affecting the dollar dollar is affecting the uh, us economy recession in the us market go up it affects the global markets so uh, such a cascading effect it's having all over so uh, the moment the us puts a stop to this and decides to face russia head on it's going to be uh, a more calmer rather than this will continue for years and years it's like a pandemic it will mm. just keep on 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 the virus will still exist somewhere you know yeah. putin must be having uh, so many other uh, generals who are as uh, eccentric as him and uh, we can't expect uh, gorbachev like uh, uh entry to calm things down that would be absolutely uh miraculous if it happens <laughs> but uh, we have to it's 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 war it's war it's war <laughs> yeah, it's asymmetric to... war um <clears throat> and he's going he's going to play that he is playing that he's good at it yeah. and so um i i are you saying that if biden was stronger Yes. and if biden you know took greater sanctions got europe to take greater sanctions um he could also he could be more forceful in the united nations okay. he could cause um the united nations to take action but that has to override the veto problem yes. uh, okay. so uh, could let me ask you uh, could if the general assembly wanted to take greater sanctions could they override the veto problem in the security council or are they no. stuck they they can't yes. do it that is the exact problem in the united nations that yeah. the veto power is not at all uh, restricted by any other it is prime uh, and that is what makes the united nations very um, uh, facile in its uh, action j uh, if even one country or its allies don't want that action to be implemented it doesn't get implemented in the united nations it again goes back to the drawing board and again there are uh, letters written and let's do this let's do this it reaches the security council veto again comes down so that's what i'm telling you america has to understand that it's the hegemon or the uh, top most power in this world order take charge and go for action rather than stay back pass fleeting remarks and then wait for something to happen because see putin is very clear about what he wants if he goes down he takes everybody down with him if he doesn't go down this this situation continues for a long long time so ukraine is not going to be see if he wanted to really really bomb ukraine he could have done carpet bombing and finished off ukraine in a matter of a few days if you see the map russia is humongous and <laughs> ukraine is just a uh, uh, fetal uh, in front of uh, uh, russia so if he wanted to really finish he would have no this is helping him this prolonged uh, battle is helping him win the war and we waiting are not doing anything except for causing more recession more uh, um, you know, countries to what do you say uh, mingle in between and uh, hurt themselves rather than you know take sides how many people have come in front and said we side ukraine or we side russia nobody uh, like india will abstain from russian uh, from supporting russia but can it go against russia no it's a strategic partner china will never uh, support uh, 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 ukraine because russia is a strategic partner in yeah. the same way uh, us has to come and say no we will support Ukraine wholeheartedly we are coming in nato is coming in why is nato taking so long to come it's going to be a prolonged battle if there is no immediate action yeah okay uh, i got a couple of questions about that though i think what i hear you saying as far as the united nations is concerned and the united nations has a fatal flaw here it cannot yeah. act and so no. and so uh, what what the world requires to solve this problem is for the US Biden step up and 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 supplant the United Nations do 
what the United Nations should have been doing. Okay, and the marginal United Nations has marginalized itself, and the only solution is that somebody steps up and acts like the United Nations, <laughs> and that means being a strong, charismatic leader. It means bringing as many countries um, as possible together and acting yes. as a kind of alternative United Nations, and then but, taking aggressive action and yes. not worrying about Putin's threats, which I, I personally about nuclear war, just doing it. Um, yes. But they're not doing it. He's not doing it. So what you have is uh, a growing sense of, of, of um, fragmentation, a growing sense of confusion, a growing lack of, um, a lack of, uh, um, of, of resolve. And, um, and, and you're saying also that time works against a solution. Yes. Um, this has to be right now. It has to be definitive and it has to be Biden because there's nobody else. Um, yes. This is a problem. It, it, and it's made more complicated, don't you think, by the fact that the next time we look, we, we could have a Republican president mm -hmm. who doesn't care about Ukraine, who doesn't yes. care about the United Nations, who doesn't yes. care about dealing with the problem at all. Nationalistic, okay. isolationist. You know, where that we're not closer to a solution, but way further away to a solution. And we effectively perpetuate Russia's power on this. That's what I get out of it. Yes. So where's the happiness here? Uh, within ourselves. <laughs> 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 so, Jay, like I'm telling you, see, Libya, Libya, Gaddafi decided to replace the dollar uh, with the African currency. Uh, everybody came on to him and uh, the R2P was criticized to be a regime changing uh, tenet, a principle which changed the regime. Russia and the US were on the same uh, this now uh, on the same page. But now when Russia decides to change to ruble, Russia and US are uh, uh, close to each other. So, I mean, it's like, uh, how to tell you, it's like a bone being broken <laughs> in between uh, to uh, two animals, they're not going to bother about Ukraine. And I'm telling you why Ukraine is important for the United Nations, uh, United States, is because of the recession, more economic effects. CJ, anywhere in the world, there's a war. It benefits United United States and Russia directly. Direct monetary uh, benefits to both these countries. Correct, but the. Uh, pinch that we are feeling in the United States is the recession. And this Ukraine war is that exact trigger. And that's why we have to fight it. No, we have to stop it. If it continues for a longer time, I mean, it will threaten our entire society. Well, let me ask How you this. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me take the other side of it for a moment. <laughs> suppose there is a, a Republican president. And suppose he doesn't care about Ukraine. We already see that the um, mm -hmm. the, the GOP doesn't really care about Ukraine. It's isolationist, nationalistic, and so forth. <clears throat> a Republican president would say, I don't care. Um, Putin can do what he wants to do. He can have mm -hmm. what he wants to have. Well, we can you know, ignore the uh, United Nations because it's not necessary. And, the, and it's not necessary for the United States to do anything about this. In that case, in that scenario, what happens to the dollar versus the ruble? What happens to you know the world order? The, that is the world order without genocide, the world order without war. Um, what happens if the United States disappears from the whole issue? Um, it should not disappear from the issue because- oh, but it, What happens I, if it does? Uh, if it does, the expansionist policy of Russia sustains itself and it doesn't stop just on Ukraine. It will continue to Norway, it will continue to Finland. It will continue to other areas of, uh, you know, bordering Russia. The referendums, the uh, <laughs> referendums will be held. Flags will be hoisted, and that will be Russian territory right on the doorsteps of uh, Europe. Western Europe will kind of disappear, and we will have another third world war, any which way, is raging in Europe. So Europe is uh, is at world's end. You've seen Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> it's that. It's at the world's end right now. Uh, Russia is, it, is at its doorstep. 
and russia uh, the mentality of russia is not going to stop because see this small uh, spark which allowed the ruble to become strong it gave uh, russia a lot of uh, monetary power and when you have countries which are willing to trade oil and gas in ruble it made russia realize the power of its own oil and its produce and we have the siberian entire area full of oil and gas they can sustain themselves very well so uh, they are not going to bother about anything else i told you if russia wanted to finish the war with ukraine they could have carpet bombed it and finished it in a couple of months but they are purposely it's a tactic of war to prolong the war so that the enemy uh, stagnates and uh, finishes off withers off once they wither off the once they become weak russia can sustain itself ukraine can't so that is the kind of policy that he is playing and when uh, a us support is withdrawn uh, europe becomes weaker you see europe depends a lot on uh, the united states the entire uh, world depends on the united states if it has to be against russia if if united states decides to stay neutral we have a um, uh, Uh, what is that it's uh, a <laughs> what is there's no control on this fascist <laughs> uh, chaos chaos then, yes chaos <laughs> chaos and so we have expansionist policies going over the head so he will be um, uncontrolled mm. so, no borders <clears throat> so this this is um uh, pretty scary is this is this the message that uh, you want people to take or from your book about r2p um uh, what what message would you like to leave them with tj uh, r2p uh, res- the responsibility to protect is when the international community came together as a whole to protect civilians against its own own uh, government but we have a government which has come from outside so there is invasion going on in the modern world so i think it is time for a modified version of the r2p and the international community to come together as a whole and stop the expansionist war there's actual war going on with without any um, uh, there's no you know you can't uh, rein him in he is deciding one thing after another every day when you see him parading a nuclear submarine on the roads it is scary you saw the whale it's dubbed as the whale uh, on the streets of kremlin a uh, 300 ton uh, nuclear uh, submarine being paraded on the streets you understand the torpedo that this man can bring in if he intends or if he sets his mind to it so we have to understand we don't face a, a tyrant with no um, power we face a tyrant with fire power will power and partners so <laughs> it's not a easy task to uh, rein him in we have to understand that international community needs to act together and the united nations fails as an organization if we have finished a general assembly of two weeks and not done anything concrete has there been a diplomatic mission uh, leave alone military uh, action has there been a diplomatic mission of all the countries going to russia and talking to mr putin there has been no there has not been so even when there's no diplomatic uh, resolution or even a attempt to diplomatically resolve this what can you do you can't hackle uh, russian members when they come in the general assembly with booze and say that they will solve the problem there has been no diplomatic mission gone to the uh, russian embassy or <laughs> even to russia so we have to russia- get your book out we should send your book to vladimir putin uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay all right we should send your book to joe biden we should send your book to mr modi <laughs> in put, india for supporting put, russia we should send your book to uh, xi jinping um <laughs> your book has to get out to, so the people can see uh, where we are uh, and i and i gather we're uh, in an inflection point which um, which is in effect a scenario for world war 3 yes um, and, and that's really what it's about either you have r2p or you have a state of constant and increasing war one or the right. other Simple. yes
Well, it's been nice knowing you, Rupmani. <laughs> <laughs> we'll always say that. Even <laughs> there's never going to be a disconnect. Definitely. I, <laughs> I agree. Dr. Rupmani Khandakar helping us understand these geopolitical maneuvers and um, and the role of the United Nations and and what the role of the United States must be in, yes. in order to step in and and and, and take action. Take some action. Action is the operative word. Thank you so much, Rupmani. It's always great to talk to you. Thank you so much, Jay. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.